Okay, so we're moving on to the new chapter. We're on section 7.1. I've divided these videos into three parts, so that should help you out with your homework a little bit better. So this first section, 7.1, you are learning four rules. You are learning modus ponens, modus tollens, hypothetical syllogism, and disjunctive syllogism. Okay, so based on all the information you've learned in chapter six, these should be fairly straightforward. One thing is you are making the assumption that each one of these lines is true. Okay, so that means if P then Q all together should be true, P is true, and then that's how you derive Q. So you just need to know that, and then we'll go through these, and then we'll start on the first part. Okay, so modus ponens, MP. If P, then Q. So you're given P, so if you get P, then you automatically get Q. That one should be pretty straightforward. If you doubt whether it's valid or not, you can always do a truth table. Guarantee you it's going to be valid 100% of the time. Okay, modus tollens. If P, then Q, and then you negate the Q, that's what they're doing right here, then you get to negate the P. Okay? And as we move on, you'll see that the P and Q will change, but it doesn't matter as long as it has the same form or the same logical structure. Hypothetical syllogism, if P then Q, that's your first one, if Q then R. And then the way I always think of it is this, the Qs cancel each other out, and then you want to drop these straight down. So you can see it as a circle almost, and you get if P, then R. Just remember to drop these straight down. And by the way, it can be the other way around so that the Qs are like this, and then you have the R on that side, and then you have the Q on that side. So then you would get R to P. So you can get it this way, and you can get it this way still works the same. You just need the repetition of that Q. Okay, and the last one, you have P or Q, and then you know that not P ends up being true, like I said earlier. So that means P has to be false. So that means Q has to be true. And we know that because a disjunction, all you need is one side to be true, and the entire thing ends up being true. Okay, so that's your rules. And now we're going to start playing with them. So basically what we're going to do is we are going to be doing proofs, but we're going to do little baby steps here. So what I did is I literally took a picture of the book, so I didn't have to do extra work. I can't decide if I'm lazy or genius, so I guess you guys will have to decide for me. Okay, so what they've given you here is we have two premises, and it's going to lead to something else here. And they want us to know what it's going to lead to and how we're going to derive it. So that's why you have a line over here. So you have if G, then F, and then your next line you're told not F. Okay, so let's go back and look here. We have a negation in R's. And the negation is right here, in case you guys forgot. So the negation is on the consequent, okay? So that's not really an option. Now this one, we have a negation here. It's a negation of that. Okay, we got, a, we got something that can work. So we're going to have to apply modus tollens. And you can obviously see we don't have three conditional statements, and we definitely don't have a disjunction, so those are out of the picture as well. So we know we're going to be dealing with modus tollens. So let's go look at it. We have G, then F, then we have not F. So based on the rule, we know we are going to get... That's a bad one. We know we're going to get not G. And this is how you show people that you know how you derive that. So you say, I took line one, I took line two, and I applied modus tollens. And since we know it's always valid, 
we're good. Okay, let's go to the second one. This time we're given S, and then we're given S, then M. So let's go look. We've got P, then Q, and then we got P. That seems to be the same logical structure. So let's see, we got P, then Q, then we get P, then we get Q. I mean, it seems like they're backwards, but does that matter? No, it's still, we have S, we have if S, then M. We can make this work. So on line three, we know we're gonna derive, let's clean that up. We know we're gonna derive M, and we also know we're gonna use line one, we're gonna use line two, and this time, we're gonna use modus ponens. Okay, so let's look at the third one. We have if R then D, and then we have if E then R. Okay, so right away we pretty much know it's not gonna be this because we don't have two conditional statements. Can't be that, we don't have two conditional statements. Can't be that, we don't have any wedges. It's gotta be this one. Okay, so let's just go back now. So we have if R then D, if E then R. Okay, so these, the R's are the repetition, so we know we're gonna have to drop down the E, put the horseshoe, and then we're gonna do our D, and then we got it to look just like this one. And we know we use line one and two, and we used HS. Okay, now the fourth one, it has a wedge in it. So I'm going to have to guess that we're down here and we're going to have to use this one right here. So disjunctive syllogism is P or Q, then you're given not P, so then you're given Q. Okay, let's see how we can apply this. So we have B or C, then we're given not B, so we know that B is false, so C has to be true. So we'll use 1 and 2, DS. Okay, so the next two, a little bit more complicated just because they're giving us lines that we're not gonna need, okay? So line one on number five is N, okay? Line two is N or F, and then three is if N then K. So if you're looking at this, can we use line one and two together? No, because that's gonna be a disjunctive syllogism because there's a wedge, and you have to negate one of these. So we have a not P here, and if you look over here, we'd have to have a not N in order to make that work in order to get the F, but we don't have that. So since nothing's been negated in our disjunction, it's not gonna work. So now we're gonna ask ourselves, how about line one and line three? Well, let's look up back up here. Yeah, that looks like it's gonna work. If N then K, I have N, therefore I get K. And this time we're gonna tell them we use line one and three and we used modus ponens. Okay, let's go on to the sixth one. So we have not J or P, then we're given not J, then we have S, then J. Okay, let's just start with the first two. Let's ask ourselves, will those work? Okay, so we have not J or P and then we have not J. Okay, so we have not J or P, and then we're given not J. And we do have a negation this time. However, take note here. This P is a positive P. This P is a negation. Over here, we have a negation and we have a negation. So actually, these two are exactly the same. So that's just telling us that not J is true. Okay, that's fine. That makes the whole statement true, but that doesn't tell us what P is because P could be true and P could be false and still this whole statement is going to be true. So we're not really forced into anything there. Okay, so that's why we can't use one and two together because not J is repeated. Not going to help us. Okay, now let's look at line one. Sorry, line two, my bad. Line two and line three, okay? So now we have not J, and then we have if S, then J. Okay, 
now I'm thinking looking a lot like this one up here okay so the J here is positive now the J here is a negation of it so it's the opposite so that means we get to do a oops I guess you can't color right there so that means we're gonna get a not s and then that means we took line two and three and we used modus tollens okay Hopefully that helps you out with part one. Next video will be part two.